want us to, um, this is uh, not anything new to any of you, uh, but I think it's real necessary just to re re reawaken, maybe if that's a word, I don't know, uh, reawaken uh, something that ought to be in your mind all the time. Sometimes it tends to slip and you kind of forget about it and life has a lot of things that get your attention and uh, but this is one of them that has to be on the mind all the time and that's about where a lost soul spends eternity and I know you're okay so you're not real concerned about it yourself uh, but but others are very you know they're gonna they're gonna meet an eternal destination and if, if it's the wrong one it's I, I just can't even imagine somebody going to a place where it just they never stop dying. I, it's just the most horrific thing I can ever imagine, and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. And I don't really have too many of them, but uh, if if I had a real bad one, I wouldn't wish it on him either. I'd even like to see uh, Joe Biden get uh, get out of it if, if there was a way. Amen. All right, let's pray together. Uh, Lord God, we come to you now and. We bow our heads, we close our eyes, we think about you and ask you, God, to please uh, be with us here in this room and uh, help us spiritually, Lord, uh, uh, impress our hearts with your spirit like only you can. And God, uh, I just pray that you'd move in our midst. I pray that your word would have preeminence, that you'd help me to say the things most needful and guard my lips from error and help the hearts and the ears of these people that they might grasp, understand, and uh, build them up in the most holy faith, Lord, I pray, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, take your Bible, go to Genesis chapter 35, and read you a verse here in verse 18. And uh, the Bible says here, um, And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died. Uh, so the body died, but the soul left the body. And it says that she called his name Benoni. She was given uh, birth to a child. It was hard labor. And a midwife, I think she said, thou shalt have this son also. And, uh, but it was such a hard labor that she didn't make it. Uh, but the child did. And uh, called his name uh, Benjamin. Uh, she, I guess I would say his uh, father wanted to call him uh, Benjamin. She wanted to call him Benoni. I guess that's the way ladies look at little children. You give them little cute names, you know. But Benjamin was more manly, and Dad wanted that. And so uh, the last, uh, the last patriarch was Benjamin, and this is where he was born. And the Bible said his mother died, uh, giving birth to this him. And the uh, Bible said a soul. Now we don't know nothing about a soul. Nobody's ever seen one. I've never heard of anybody said they've seen a soul. Uh, maybe some people high on peyote or something might see a soul. But we don't really know what they saw when, when they get done telling you what they saw. Uh, but anyway, the Bible says that we got a soul. And it's different than the body. It's a spiritual creature. And it, it can't stay in the body when the body dies. Uh, even a lost soul has to leave. Uh, when a body dies, it, it has to go. And there's a verse for it there. Take your Bible and go to Matthew 10. And we're just kind of lay a little groundwork here about a body and a soul. And it's elementary for most of us. We understand the bodies. We all have one. We look at it every day in the mirror and you know, watch it and feed it and take care of it and all that stuff. So we know about the body. We don't know much about the soul. Uh, but the body says you got one. And uh, near as I could tell, the soul is the real you. And if I was to pull that soul out of you somehow, it would probably look just like you. I don't know. Uh, but uh, but you got a soul. The uh, Bible uses personal pronouns to describe him. You'll say his soul, stuff like that, or he, and uh, refer to him in that way. All right, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, and the Bible says, And fear not them which kill the body. Well, I, that's a rough one. I, I kind of fear that. But he said, don't worry. He's, he's really saying don't worry about it. But here's what he said. He said, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy. It doesn't say Lord kill here. Uh, both soul and body in hell. Uh, so when you look at the body and you look at it being dead, uh, its, its place for its death is a grave. And when you look at a soul and you look for its destruction, as it said there, uh, that place is hell. 
and hell is in the lower parts of the earth. Uh, there is a lake of fire that is not of this earth, uh, but is in outer darkness somewhere. And uh, I called it a lake of fire. Now, we'll see that someday, and we'll see uh, souls go into that for their final resting place. But right now, today, we just want to look at uh, the grave, and we want to look at hell, and we want to look at the body and the soul, and we want to look at those two resurrections, if time will permit. All right, take your Bible and go to Revelation 20. I guess you knew we were headed there eventually. Uh, Revelation chapter 20. And you say, why well, you tell us all this stuff? We don't, we know about that stuff. Well, I want you to get a vivid picture of a guy going there and how horrible it's going to be for that guy. And what you ought to have in your makeup, and uh, if, you can, if you can have it in your, in your mind every day at some point, or be soul conscious, as they say, uh, maybe you take more opportunity to witness when you can and get a track out when you can. Uh, knowing how detrimental it is to not do so. Uh, so I should have you there now in Revelation chapter uh, 20. And we'll look at verse uh, uh, 13. And this is a, a great chapter for uh, death and hell. And it's a great chapter showing uh, the, 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 the things that happen uh, when you die. And the Bible says... Uh, Let's look then down there at verse, um, well, let's see. Let's look at verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And that, that him there be God. And there was found no place for them. And the them there are the ones that are resurrected for this judgment. Uh, verse 12. And I saw the dead. And that, as we go through our study, you'll see that that word will usually apply to a guy's body. Usually. In fact, I've not seen it otherwise. I say usually because I didn't run all the references. There must have been 200 of them. I saw the dead small and great. Now, that just means the poor and the rich kind of thing. Or the weak and the strong kind of thing. And I saw the dead small and great. So, so no, no limit to who. Everybody. Kind of, doesn't matter what. Whether they were rich, poor, free, handsome, ugly, it didn't matter. Everybody's coming up. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Now, now you see that word dead shows the body for sure, doesn't it? Because they put souls in the sea. Amen. All right, uh, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell, now here comes hell, delivered up the dead which were in them, them is plural, meaning the grave or the sea in this case, and hell, uh, lower parts of the earth. After the colon it says, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. And so if you're not written in the book of life, then you're a lost soul. And, uh, and your abode is the lake of fire, and that's an eternal, everlasting torment. Uh, the Bible says, uh, and I saw the smoke of their torment ascend forever and ever and ever. It never stopped coming up. Uh, so it's a, it's a way of dying forever. Uh, when we go to heaven, we live forever. The opposite is a dying forever. And uh, so you see it there in Revelation 20. All right, let's back up the first book again to Genesis 21. And notice uh, a verse that gives us a little more information about the body and the soul. And I'll draw you a little picture here in a little bit. Uh, it says here in Revelation, uh, or, I'm sorry, Genesis 21. And we'll look at verse 16. And if you got your Bible, you want to you wanna get that last that last book there in Revelation chapter 21, and you get verse 16. And she went and sat her down over against, uh, against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. And she said, let me not see the death of the child. So there again shows the body, not the soul. Nobody ever sees a soul die. 
at the death of a child, and she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. And so her boy was pining away, and they didn't have no water. They'd been walking through the desert for days and days, and didn't look like they were going to survive. And uh, she didn't want to see the boy die. She thought he was going to die, and so she got away from him, so she couldn't watch. And, uh, and uh, so it mentioned there that she didn't want to see him die. Uh, and so you see the word death will usually and almost always refer uh, to this thing, this, this body here. All right, last verse for the same idea is Colossians 1. We'll see it again. I'll read it to you. It's in, in Colossians 1.22. It says, in the body of his flesh through death. It makes it very plain. Uh, that which dies, uh, you're talking about uh, death, it's about the body. So when it says death and hell, you know when he says death, it's the body. That's why we're laying this down. So you get a revelation said, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. You know what death means. It means the body came up. And then the soul came out of hell. And both of them came up, came together, and got judged. The same man. But remember, when you die, the soul cannot stay in your body. It's got to go. And whether you're saved or lost, a saved man's soul, when he dies, his soul goes to heaven. And when a lost man dies, his soul goes to the to the nether regions. We'll look at that in a little bit as well. Scary sounding word, the nether regions. Amen. All right, uh, take your Bible and go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 32. Great book, Ezekiel. I've been going through it in the last few weeks. And a uh, difficult book, but very interesting. And got a blessing out of it this last week, just looking at some of these things. And I want you to look at there in uh, Ezekiel chapter 32, and we'll look at verse 18. And I want to I title this chapter as Casualties of War. If I was going to title the chapter, that's what I'd title it. Uh, verse 18, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt. So you can see all these soldiers out there in the field. And cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations, under the nether parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. Notice the word pit, and notice the direction is down. <laughs> Verse 19, whom dost thou pass in beauty? Go down and be thou laid with the uncircumcised. Uncircumcised, just a way of saying unclean. Verse uh, 20, and they shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. That's a, a war going on, man going up against man and killing each other. As she is delivered to the sword, draw her and her multitudes. The strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with them that help him. They are gone down. They lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. You can see that's a casualty of war. They went up against each other, and they were mighty men, and they had the name of being mighty men. They were renowned men. Uh, they had the name of being tremendous people. They went into battle, and God said, because you thought you were powerful and because you thought you could do all, therefore will I lay thee, and I'll take you out, and I'll smite you down, and you thought your strength was great, and you just finding out there's always somebody better, always somebody better. Verse 22, Asher is there in all her company, his graves, notice that. That's where the bodies go. All these people, they get slain by the sword, that's where they go. His graves are about him, all of him slain, fallen, uh, fallen by the sword, whose graves are set, notice it, in the sides of the pit. Ah. So the pit had to do with the grave, but it goes further than the grave. Because now it's in the sides. So when you look at a grave or where a body is buried, it's like being in the side of a pit. Uh, at the bottom of the pit is the nether regions. We'll see that as we go. Notice verse 23. Whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave. All of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. There is Elam and all her multitude round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone down uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living. Yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. How do you bore your shame in the grave? There's no shame in the grave. You're dead. Your body's dead. It's not conscious of uh, what you were before. The shame is the, the nether regions. So the soul has a conscience. And the soul has 
of feelings. Yeah. Uh, in one place it said, uh, send Lazarus and dip his finger in water, cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So you feel pain. Yeah, I'm tormented. And you feel anguish. That's part of torment. Uh, notice the nether regions. All right. Uh, take your Bible and go to um, uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, get Deuteronomy chapter uh, 32. I think I'm telling you right here. Uh, I got a couple verses here. I might have the wrong one. Deuteron let's try Deuteronomy 32 first. And that will be your fifth, fifth book of your Old Testament if you're a new Christian trying to fumble around, find the books. You want Deuteronomy 32 and verse uh, 22. 32 and what did I say? I said Deuteronomy 32, verse 22. Is there another regions in there? Let's take a look. Um, where have I put you? Yeah, Deuteronomy 32 and verse 22. One more page here. And it says here, uh, For a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn into the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with their increase, and set on fire the foundation of the mountains. So you'll notice there's a lowest hell. That's as far down as you can go. All right, uh, Psalm 86. Psalm 86, we'll see another one like that. Psalm 86. And uh, you got family, and you got friends, and you got workmates, and you got neighbors. And some of them are going to go here. Some of them are going to go to this place. And, uh, and there's no way to escape it. There's nothing they can do to get out of it other than trust Christ. And if they don't do that, they won't get out of it. And I hope not, but there may be somebody in here going there. And I don't know. I hope not. I hope all of you understand and understand the gospel and know the gospel well enough and have trusted that for your salvation. Because if not, then, uh, then this is where you're going. And uh, it doesn't matter uh, how embarrassed you are to go up in front of somebody and get saved. I'd do it in front of everybody. If I thought I was going to hell, I'd do it in front of the United Nations. I could care less, man. Yeah. Lord Jesus, save me. I, I don't want to go to the nether regions. I don't want to go where the smoke rises of their torment. I'm not interested in that. Amen. I, I'm, I'm not a tough guy. Not, not, when, it comes, not when it comes to that. <laughs> All right, uh, where have I got you? Let's see, I got you in Psalm 86, and then we'll look here at verse 13. And the Bible says here, For great is the mystery, or the mercy toward me, for thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. All right, now, in, our, in, in uh, Ezekiel 32, it talked about uh, the, ned, the nether parts of the earth. And I, I looked it up. The first one I found was Daniel 12. Take your Bible and go to Daniel 12. Interesting to see what the word nether means. Daniel 12 will give you an idea. And uh, for you young Christians and new Christians, the way you interpret Bible is with Bible. That's how you do it. You don't, you, don't, you don't wait for some guy that says he knows Greek or some guy that says he's a preacher and tell you what the Bible meant to say. You never, you never, you always... You're always in danger there because the guy could be making a mistake. He's not holy. He's not perfect. Amen. The only preacher I know of that's, never mind. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. All right. Let's, let's look at, uh, uh oh, I'm lost. Did I lose it? No, I didn't. All right. Here's Daniel 12 and then verse 2. And I, here's how you find out what, what nether means. Verse 2 And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some, no, that's not the verse. That's my two resurrection verse. That's a good one. We'll go there a little bit later. I wanted to find uh, the nether. Uh, I, I know I wrote them down. Let me see if I can find them here. All right, here we are. Uh, I'll read it to you. Well, you can go there. You might be writing down. So go to Exodus 19. Here's the nether. Here you go. There, I got three of them here. And what, what I believe it means is the lowest part. So if I got upper springs and lower springs, I got upper springs and nether springs. Nether meaning the lowest part of that spring. And we see that in the Bible. The Bible gives us the, the definition for the word. 
Amen. All right, Exodus 19 and verse 17, Moses brought forth people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the nether part of the mount. So everybody gathered at the base of the mountain. That was the lowest part of the mountain. It's just starting to go up. Everybody gathered there. So you see what that word means. All right, let's go to Joshua chapter 15. Joshua 15. Joshua, uh, uh, he was a uh, general, General Joshua. He led the, led the army. He's a great, a great military man. And when they went in and took, took a, a piece of property, uh, they gave it to their soldiers, giving it out to the soldiers. And in this passage here is Joshua 15 and verse 19, and it says here, who answered, and these are the girls here, and they said, give, give me a blessing for thou hast given me the so south land, give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. So she got all, all of it. She got the upper ones and the, and the lower ones. And the last one, if you're right, and I'll read it to you, Job 41, 24, and it says, his heart is as firm as a stone, as hard as a piece of nether millstone. So they find those harder stones in the lower, the lower regions of the earth. So you can get millstones on the upper part of the earth, and they wouldn't be as hard as maybe what the crust you're talking about? No, they have two stones. The nether one is the bottom. Oh, I got you. That's right. That, that'd be right, because that's how you grind in your... Now, see, I was just thinking it was found in the lower part, but the nether millstone is the bottom stone because that's where they would ground. They'd get the mortar and the pestle. Yep. I think that's what they call it. And they'd grind that thing, see? And that nether, that, that'd be the lower part portion. All right, so you can see what the word. So when it says, uh, when it says they went to the pit, uh, the graves are in the sides of the pit, and the souls are in the nether regions or the nether parts of the earth. So they're way, way, way down there. Now, when the scientists give you a cross section of the earth, they go to the upper crust, the lower crust, and then they get to magma, and then they get down to the molten stuff, and they get down there where that lava and all that is. And I don't guess they've ever been down there, and I don't guess they've ever been able to drill that deep, so it's just kind of guesswork because they see lava come out of the ground, so they assume that there's a core in the earth that's full of lava. Well, that may or may not be true. One thing we do know, that this thing called hell is in the lower parts of what the Bible calls a pit. And the body goes in the sides of the pit, or it's just a way of saying a higher place than, because if you dug a hole and, and put a body in there, you'd say, I'll put him in a pit. And that'd be accurate. You'd be, you'd be right. But the way the Bible says that that just be the side showing it's not down low. The nether parts are what's down low. And you also find that the body goes to the sides of the pit, and the soul goes to the lower parts of the pit. Mm. Yeah, that's the way it's going. All right, take your Bible and go to Daniel 12. Daniel chapter 12. And here we'll look at verse 2. And the Bible says there's two resurrections. So I'll draw you a little something. And... Uh, this is what I come up with when I got done reading the thing. Uh, Brother Waters, why don't you read Daniel 12, two, did I put 12, 2? Is that what it was? Yeah, 12, 2. So there's sound like two resurrections there. So there's the body in the grave there. And then the soul is all the way down. All the way down. And it go toward the center of the earth to the middle part. So hell is closer to you than the Chinese. Is that right? Yeah. Because if you were in China and you went to hell, you'd have to go to the middle. If you were in L.A. and you went to hell, you'd have to go in the middle. So they go in the middle. So if I'm in L.A. and you're in China, hell is closer to me than you are in China. So this thing goes all the way down. Now the Bible says there's two resurrections. Now you and I both know that there's a time of tribulation coming. There's a time of one seven-year period of Daniel's 70th week. Uh, we call it tribulation, 
or a time of trouble. And it's seven years. It's a seven year long hitch. And uh, we call it the trib or a tribulation kind of a thing. It's split in half by three and a half years. And then there's a little gap. I think, Doc, I think you had about 40 days there, something like that. 55, 52. Something like that. There's a little gap in between this, uh, this millennial land. And this millennial land is a thousand years. And this is a, a time where the world is beautiful. And the curse is lifted from the earth. And uh, the vegetation grows wonderfully. And all the, the water is clean and pretty, pretty again. It's not, uh, every, all the curse is lifted. Everything is beautiful. Fish are jumping everywhere. And birds are flying everywhere. And the lion comes out. And you'll get to pet one. Yeah, and hug one because it will not be wanting to eat you because there will be peace in that land. And the Bible says the leper will lie with the land and the child will play with the serpent and put his hold in the cockatrice's debt and you know, all that stuff. And everything's fine. There's nobody at evil, nobody trying to hurt one another anymore. Even nature itself is at peace with everything else. It would be a wonderful time. And, uh, and the Bible said there's uh, a couple resurrections here. Now I'll draw... Uh, this one for the Christian goes like that. And that's a resurrection of his, of his body. And he goes up like that. And then there's another resurrection of the lost. And they're, they're coming up. Uh, let's see. I, I, got them, I got them coming up uh, a thousand years later. Let's see if I got that right. They're coming up like this. Are coming up like that. So you got the lost guy here, and his body is going to come up, and his soul is going to come out. So the soul is in the nether regions, and the bodies are in the sides of the pit, and the bodies are going to be raised up. The lost people go up to the great white throne judgment that we read about in Daniel 2. And then the, the saved people, they go up here. They go up here, and they come down, and they come down here. And they go with the remnant of Jews. The Jews, the remnant of the Jews comes through this, and we meet them there. And then all of us go into that millennial land and reign with Christ for a thousand years. And that's how that thing's going to go. Yeah, it'd be wonderful. Uh, but for these people here, for these people here, their fate is up for judgment. And the Bible says, for every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Uh, the Bible says that God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. Got any secrets? They're coming out. <laughs> they judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. And it'll be real bad. All right, take your Bible and go to uh, Revelation 20. Revelation 20. And almost done here, just give you a few more things. What I want you to think about tonight is the terrors of hell. And we've looked at, we've looked at the body and the soul, and we've looked at Christians and lost people, and we looked at uh, their judgment, and we looked at uh, the grave, and we looked at the soul in hell, and then they come up for judgment. And remember, when they're down here, it's a place of fire, and it's a place of torment. And you find that in Luke 16. And it's a horrible place. But it's a temporary place. They're going to get out of here. They're going to get out of here at this resurrection. That's how they get out. All right. Um, let's look at Revelation 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. And for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So we go up before the thousand years, and then after the thousand, the other resurrection goes up. You see that in verse 11, Revelation 20 and verse 11. 
And I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things, were written in the books according to their works. And the sea, uh, the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Notice death and hell, that's both the body. Remember when you saw the word death, it was for the body. And then when you see soul, it's for uh, hell, you see it for the soul. So death is the grave, the body in the grave coming up. And then uh, when it says hell, it's the soul coming out of, of hell. And he said, the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. All right, let's go to John, I want to say five. This is, I'm going by memory here, so I might mess up. Um, memory's getting a little foggy these days. Uh, John chapter 5, I want to say 20-something. I'm looking for a verse talking about the two, uh, 28, 28. Uh, John 5 and verse 28. And the Bible says here, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, watch the duality. And, and they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil under the resurrection of damnation. That's a thousand year split there between those two resurrections. All right. So uh, you, you may have a, a workmate uh, that's lost. And that's where they're headed. They're headed. What's going to happen is they're going to die. And, uh, and uh, they're going to get real surprised when they die. Because uh, an angel is going to come get them and usher them into hell. And they're going to go down. And when they go down there, it'll be a place of fire, of smoke, and torment. And they'll, and they'll think they're going to see friends. There won't be no friends. And they're going to seek for water. There won't be no water. And they're going to have a conscience and think about their family and hope their family don't come to this awful place. That would be a terrible place to go. Uh, you've got family. You might have an aunt or an uncle. And some of them might be getting old, and you worry about them. And you don't worry about them. I mean, they're probably doing all right. Live here in America. They probably made a good life for themselves. They're doing fine. But they're going to die. And when they die, if, if, if their soul isn't washed in the blood of Jesus, then it's going to go down to the nether regions you saw where it's going to go. And the Bible says it's going down. And it could be your own children. God forbid. It could be your own children. And there's nothing. You can't make them get saved. All you can do is hopefully that you have enough testimony in front of them yeah. that they'll believe you. Yeah. If you got a, if you got a life that's just full of nonsense and foolishness, they're not going to believe you. Remember, was it who was it? Lot? They didn't want to believe him. He said, "Man, we got to get out of here, man." He just said, uh, "Solomon." And they said, "Oh, he seemed to want to that mocked or something." I mean, yeah, well, we don't trust you. You know, I mean, he had a bad testimony. So your testimony is important. You, 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 you want to you wanna let your children see you pray from time to time. Amen. You want to you wanna teach them to pray. Amen. And you want to you wanna put God in your home. Put some scripture signs on the wall. Make, find some pretty ones. Amen. Have a Christian home. Uh, let your children know that there's, there's God. When they get older, when they come of age, they're going to have to make a choice. And you want them to make the right choice. You might have a, a mom and a dad that don't know the Lord. And you don't want you don't, you want to stop fooling around with this thought. You know, oh, one of these days I'll, you know, the Lord will work it out where I'll get to witness to him someday. You better hurry up. Yeah, and, and I don't know. Uh, Brother Pablo sent me a link on a, on a little phone, you know, and I'm looking at it. And it said, here's Brother DeMichael preaching about the rapture. And it was real good. And I thought, why is, he, why is he moved like that to preach about the rapture? Why have I been preaching for the last six weeks, you know? What, what's going on? And I, I don't know. I don't say I, I know, but I, I'm suspicious. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking, man, maybe, maybe God's getting ready to pull the cord on this thing. Maybe it's about time we're going to go. I, I don't know. But if that's the case, boy, we better get busy. Amen. Better get busy. You got a friend? You got a friend? Somebody you like? I got, a, I got a good friend. His name is George Hall. You met him. He come in here every once in a while. He's a good friend. He's saved man. He's a Christian man. But I didn't know he was. And we went to the beach one time, him and I. He said his, his church was going to go down there, and they were going to have a baptism at the beach. 
And I knew his sister, his name, her name is Susan, Susan Hall. And she's older than George. And I, when I, me and George were, uh, I think the girls, my sister was a couple years older than me, and uh, Susan Hall was a couple years older than George, so she was older than me. And we got to the beach. Well, Susan wanted to see George get baptized, so he was getting baptized in the ocean. The church was all there, and we were having a nice time. We had the blanket out there, and we were all sitting around talking. And I got to talk to Susan. I hadn't seen Susan in 40 years. I mean, it had been a long time, you know. And here she was, a grown woman, married with children and everything. And I said, Susan, I said, you a Christian woman? She goes, no, and I'm not interested. And I went, well, well all right. And uh, so I thought, well, Lord, let me find another way in here. I was, <laughs> think about this for a while. Then somebody said something. I said, well, what about you, Susan? You ever think about maybe Jesus and maybe look into what it takes to know him and see why all these people are called Christians? And what, what, what are they all liking him for. I mean, there must be something to it. You ever? That boy, she got mad. She got indignant. She, she got so mean and vicious. I, I, that, that happened to me. And I was a friend. So I, you know, I mean, I would, I've been knowing them since I was yay high the grass off. And, uh, but she wasn't having it. She wasn't having it. And there's nothing you can do about that. There's nothing you can do about it. You try as much as you can, but uh, you, 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 you can't make them get saved. But you want to do everything you can to get them saved. And, and, if they, and if they don't like you and they give you a rough time, look past it. This thing's, way, this thing's way bigger than my popularity. You don't have to like me. I almost sleep just fine if you don't like me. I like to have friends. I like people like me, but you don't have to like me. I'm all right if you don't. I'm okay. I'll be all right. I'll take me a, a half a baby aspirin and go right to sleep. Won't bother. I won't lose any sleep. If you don't like me, it'll be okay. All right. So, you know, I don't know what it is about people today. They... I feel like they don't want to offend anybody or make anybody mad. And, you know, this is too important. You've got to get rid of all that. You've you got you to gotta try real hard. Paul said, I've become all things to all men that I might save some. In other words, he, he looked at the situation he was in and says, okay, now how can I get in? These people, they think this way. So let me, let me come in that way. That's, that's what they're attracted to. I'll come in that way. You know, if they're sports people, well, well I'm going to talk sports with them for a while. I'll come in that way, and, and I'll, I'll get in on their level, you know. And eventually, I'm going to work this, <laughs> this uh, salvation thing in there if I can. But if you've got family or you've got neighbors or friends that you like and you'd hate to see go to hell, uh, just realize this is going to happen. It's going to happen. And people are going to they're gonna face God. And they're going to come up, and everything they've ever done against him is going to be revealed. And there will be, be a judgment on that. And the Lord will pronounce the judgment. He has every right to do it. And uh, then he's going to cast, uh, I remember Dr. Uckman, he, he was reading some verses, and he drew, he drew, he drew a picture. Not, not true like this, but a nice picture. He was an artist, did real good. And he drew a picture of, of a guy coming before God, and a big, huge Bible was right behind him. And the Bible on the back, the, the, here's the guy standing there, and he's got these rags on, and, he, and, he's, and he's, he's dirty, and he's sinful. He's, there's a picture of a lost man, and he's not clothed very well, and he's got dirt all over him, and he's a mess. And he's standing there, and he's shivering, and he's facing God, and he's scared to death. You know, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. And he's scared to death. And right behind him is this huge Bible, and it says, Thou shalt not a bear false witness. Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt, and thou shalt, thou shalt. Boy, just list them all down there. And this old boy just guilty. <laughs> he got guilty of all that stuff, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and the Lord said, all right, uh, bind him hand and foot and cast him in the lake of fire. So the angels come and they, they tie him, uh, his hands, and they tie his feet. And one angel gets his feet, Brother Mikey. One angel got his feet and the other angel got his shoulders. And they walked over to the pit and they looked over there and the smoke and the fire was coming up. And they went, oh, one, a two, <laughs> oh, and launched that boy out there, and he went down, and as the, as the flames come up, the ropes burned off, and he started screaming and hollering. I'm telling you the truth. I was there. You were there. And, uh, and uh, Dr. Ruckman is describing this thing, and this old boy, he's going down into hell, and the fire's coming up, and it burned the ropes off him, and he's starting to flail, and he's screaming and hollering, and his clothes start to burn off, and he's starting to get blistered, and he gets further, brother, he's falling, he's crying, and, and Brother Steve Cecil sitting back there where, where Brother Steve is. I, I was there, and it sent just chills down my spine. It made the message awesome. I mean, it was already good. Uh, but, man, when he was talking about this guy going down to hell, old Steve Cecil, he's sitting back there. He's lost. He's my friend now. 
but back, uh, back in those days, he's just a lost man. His brother, I saw his brother at, um, at Brother Stevenson's not too long ago. Went down to Brother Stevenson's and saw his brother down there. Steve, uh, Steve Cecil. No. What's, what's the brother's name? Do you remember the brother's name? I can't remember. He's a missionary now. But he's down there with uh, El Cajon. I was talking to him the other day. And his brother Steve, he come out of there, and he come down the aisle on a run. <laughs> Oh God! And he's he's yelling like that. Oh God! I don't want to go to hell. I, I tell you, it was, it was a, it was. I mean, it just give you the Ouija's, you know. And I, he fell. He flung himself on the altar. I'm not kidding, man. And he was praying. Oh God! I don't want to go to hell. God, please save my wicked soul. <laughs> and we were all standing there going, Whoa. <laughs> watching this guy. And oh, I will tell you, he got saved, boy. He got say he got he got in real real deep that day. <laughs> but I tell you one of these days, old Steve Cecil, he gonna wake up in heaven, and he gonna be there at that uh, watching those lost souls go off in hell and think, Phew. oh, I'm glad I got out of that. I'm glad I got out of that because that thing ain't nothing to play with, boy. So if you if you uh, tomorrow when you get up in the morning. Uh, arm yourself with a few tracks, you know, just a couple, just in case God opened the door for you to talk to somebody or maybe be able to just give them a gospel track. And if you don't have time, uh, I mean, if, it, if, if, if you do have time to talk with them, maybe you can tell them. And uh, in the old days, back in the 70s, uh, when we gave the gospel, we talked about hell. These days, don't say much about it because it's an uncomfortable thing. We don't, we don't want to talk about it, you know. But I think I think it'd be good. It scares people. Yeah. You say, "Well, I don't want to scare them." Hey, if that gets them saved, scare them. Yeah. Make it hot, man. Make it hot. I remember Brother uh, Keel, Brother Keel, me and Abe were up at the mountain. We we're going. I don't know where. You remember Ed Keel talking to that guy in front of us? And he uh, uh, and we got waiting. We were waiting to get lift tickets. And you and me and Ed were standing there waiting to get lift tickets. Going go skiing on the mountain. And there was an old lost boy, and he had some kind of. He had some kind of devil T-shirt on. And it said right on the back, it was a rock and roll thing, and it said 666 on it. You know, it was rough. And I'm right behind him, me and Ed looking right at it. He says, hey, brother. And he says, uh, I noticed your shirt there. He made it He made a real little, real good in there. And I'm, oh, he made it hot, Rhonda. He made it hot. He said, you know that guy on the back of your shirt right there? He's coming. And he's going to put a, he's going to stamp a 666 on your forehead. Yeah. And he said, that is old, that's going to be an old devil. I ain't going to take your soul and throw you off in hell. You're going to burn like bacon. That's what he said. You're going to burn like bacon. You ever see bacon burn? That looks hot, don't it? <laughs> it's so uncomfortable, man. <laughs> anyway. And that guy, his eyes got a little bit big. He gets saved, but he, it got his attention. It got his attention. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's all you can do is just tell him. And chances are these days, as hearts get harder and harder as time goes on, it's a little harder to win somebody to Christ. But you still want to you wanna be. I'll leave you with this last thought. Uh, it's just funny because Brother Steve and I were on exactly the same wavelength or something in our Bible lessons this morning. And I'm reading Ezekiel, and I'm reading how this guy is told to be a watchman. And he says, I want you to go up on the wall. When the enemy comes in to destroy the city, you turn around and you yell to the city, the enemy's coming, look out, and you're going to die if you don't arm yourself and get ready. And he says, and if you don't warn them and they get killed, I'm going to lay their blood on you. And he said, but if you warn them and they don't do anything about it, their blood be on their own head. And I was looking at that thing and I was reading that thing, and I thought, that's what we do on Saturday. We get out on Saturday and we tell everybody about, we, everybody coming through San Pedro, in and out on First Street and Gaffey, right there in the main, I mean, there we are, every Saturday, except for the last one, and that's what we do. We're warning the wicked, telling them, and I was so glad that their blood's not going to be on our hand, and we've been doing that for years, just years, so I'm real happy about that. I'm glad that the blood won't be on our hands, so Bayview has done what they could to tell the wicked that the enemy's coming. They're going to kill you. Better take note. Jesus is your way out. <laughs> and we got all the verses for them. So let's be soul conscious this week. In fact, the rest of your life, if you could get in the habit of being soul conscious and think about where lost people are really going to go, get past uh, how you, whether they like you or not, get past all that, try to reach them. And they give you a rough time. Just, well, I tried, you know, and nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. But give it a try. All right, let's all stand.